His name is Bob O'Bell, and I think people know it. Hey. Hey. Bob hey. uh-huh. Wow, it's really a little overwhelming. You got to understand, a little overwhelming, especially starting with last uh, Saturday. You're, you're going to the castle, yeah, the New England and, uh, Cannabis Convention, and having all those people around the block, and then going in and just being part of that. There were a lot of people there, and you know, having gone there just to learn about things, see people, talk to people, get to know at least here's my card type of thing to the people that are running the show and find out what's going on. How come I can get a prescription, but I can't get the medicine, yes. that kind of thing. Uh-huh. So yeah, when I saw you, I uh, needed some I needed just answers. That's why I was yeah. there. And then, of course, you guys gave me the honor of being the keynote speaker of the first cannabis. <laughs> yes. The opening speaker. My kids think I'm really cool now. You got to understand that. It's the first time ever that they think I'm cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And once I you know, saw you and talked to you and realized you, you were I'm suffering. sitting in the back of the room. Yeah. Yeah. I'm minding my own business. You know, my, <laughs> and I wouldn't take I, no, would I? N- no, I was, just, I was just sitting there and... No, no. You Mike was like, Mike was like, Bob, Bob Bell is here. Bob yeah, Bell is here. On the stage. He's, he's here. He's here. He's here. No. He's, 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 he needs medical marijuana, and uh, he's got the same condition I do. And I love Bob Bell. I mean, I, I was when you t- you said to me, we we started talking. You said I want. I think I would be a good spokesperson for medical marijuana. I said ha- yes. Yeah. You, 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 can't, you said it to the right person. Yeah. Me, I can make that happen. And and like I'm looking for to do things. And this was like my. I, it was like, Farone was like, maybe we should do it a little later and organize it. I was like, no, no right now. Bob is here. He, he said yes. He definitely wants to do it. Well, and you know, I just Chris, think as long as it, you yeah. know, as long as it could help, I mean, you know, you just want to walk in there and say, but when you're in uh, issues, when you have pain issues and have had a, you know, tremendous amount of uh, surgeries um, and there you are at that point in your life when you, you're tired of taking uh, drugs and you know, you, you get to a point where drugs really has been the dark side and, and you've got to find something else that, that helps. You just kind of, so I think this works. I know it works. I know it, it does works. Work. I know it works for me, although I've been very uh, kind of tiptoeing through the tulips here about, uh, you know, or tiptoeing through the plants or whatever the case may be. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, not overdoing it. I need to know what I'm doing what the doses are, and and just to make it work, you yes. know, and not, and not abuse it, but just use it, and, and that's that. And you, I'm going to tell you this, and I think other people today will tell you, you came to the right place for that. We we organized. I can't, you know, it was now. good. I was very cool. I can't, I, you know, I, said, I can't believe it. I would talk to my wife right here. I said, you know, look around. Can I believe I'm, I'm here tonight? No. I can't. <laughs> you people are obviously very cool. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, your wife Suzanne's. I'm here. flattered. Yes, she's a doctor. We'll she's for her. She's a doctor too. We have two doctors here right now. Yeah. She's a family therapist, and uh, whatever. <laughs> she's pretty damn good. She is, and it's uh, you. You look great. Like you're, you're like just talking to you and seeing you interact with people. You are the same guy that I just love watching on Sports Final for like when we couldn't get at Bridgewater State we had to go in other people's rooms we had to get new antennas we were like r- like writing people like we need to g- how do we get we need, need cable to up your in there. signal now we need this cable television why is it in the dorms at Bridgewater State we need to watch Sports Final sick, like, isn't it? <laughs> we loved your show really? it was not much to watch you know like you, know, Saturday was, nights you were funny and we you had were, a good time we had yeah. good people you know we, we set out before the show we, the people we had on there, they you know, they bring their A game, and uh, it was really fun. They knew what we were looking for, whether it was the truth or not. It didn't matter. It's just a matter of you know being argumentative and, and bringing up good points. But that was a that was a while ago. You know, all of a sudden we've morphed into this radio studio. We're we're in the cutting edge of the future here. Yeah. So let's get into that. How did you get to this point where you you know you said to me. Uh, you know, it's pain. You told Chris Farone. Chris Farone, you know, did the uh, uh, open the forum with you on stage, and you talked about the pain. Um, I don't think people quite, you know, we we didn't have enough time to really get into it like we could flesh it out today. What happened to you? You've had a number of spinal fusion surgeries. I know how serious those are because I'm contemplating one. Um, that's my end game. Like, you know, I can k- take the pills. I don't do the pills. They offered me cortisone even, but my doctor's like, why do cortisone if the medical marijuana is working right now, even if you have the nerve pain? Um, 
And Spinal Fusion is really the only end game for me, but it's so risky. I'll miss so much work, and you never know if it's going to work. And you, how many have you had now? Well, tell us about what happened to you, why you need this medicine. I think it's, I've had a total of four. I mean, three legitimate ones, and, and one you can just throw in as a starter. Uh, and started out with a cervical, um, you know, three to six, and then it went to lumbar, and then it went to the whole thoracic because... And it was just, and the really uh, problem was nerve damage. And that's really what Mm -hmm. took place. And that's what, you know, the pain, it's almost like having diabetic pain, which is on the nerves on the bottom of your feet. Yeah, I know all about that. That's just kind of someplace where it shows up. Uh, Hands, feet, whatever, and other issues. But I went to, um, okay, pain clinic, Brigham and Women's Pain Clinic, where they insert, there are two things. They can do a stimulating um, thing into the, with, nerve. into the nerve, or they can insert something in your body, and it pumps a very small amount of drugs into your spine. Uh, Dilaudid and a couple of just really, but you can you don't need much because it goes right to your spine. It doesn't have to go through your whole body to get there. So I have one of those pumps in there, and I, it it only has to be refilled. July next July it has to be refilled. It's bizarre. But it works okay. It helps. You know, it's just, yeah, I know it's bizarre. It's, but what about the medical marijuana? You've been well, using this now. And no, it, this and was it. Help? This, yeah. That, that helps? The medical marijuana? Yeah. yeah. And, I, sure, yeah, and yeah, how do you, I, how have you experimented? Like, I mean, have you used this? Like, like No, I, I, I'm, okay. a new, I'm a neophyte. You have okay, to understand. You're, you're I'm, I'm on the cutting edge. And okay. I have, this is the cutting edge. Okay. I don't, I don't grow it. I don't, you know. Yeah. You you had you roll had it, you, I don't grow you, it, I don't, yeah. I, you, you know, weren't using it until you had this incident right. with the pain. This is true. And is true. What, how have you used it? My daughter, uh, who is out in Oregon, where they're fairly more um, enlightened, right? When it comes to uh, things like this, you know, she was explaining to me how what how sophisticated. I think that was the word she used. How sophisticated. She said, Dad, you have to come out here and look at these shops. You just have to go in and see the packaging and see, you know, where they are in terms of uh, doing the right thing. And then I'm not going to just I'm not going to get myself into trouble or anybody else. But I, you know what? I, <laughs> we're still unfortunately on that point where. You know, I'm not going to tell you how she got it to me, but what difference does it make? You came across the medicine. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And it really worked. And it was she kind of taught me or told me, okay, this is this is for that. This is for that. This is how you use this. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know, I felt pretty stupid. But on the other hand, you know, that's the generation she grew up in. That's the way it goes. We don't get to pick our parents. You know, it happens. So. Anyway, that that's kind of the way it started, and um, I, I don't know what else to say except that I've really been watching this movement grow. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good when that happens. And in Massachusetts, it's been so frustrating because you can get a prescription, but you can't get the stuff the prescriptions for. Yes. And I had my yes. I had that's my old. primary physician, and I'll give her credit. I never thought she'd write me a prescription. I've talked to her a couple of times. Well, about, this is in Massachusetts? Yeah, in Needham. I yeah. never thought she'd write me a prescription. But I went in there and said, look, please, uh, I know there's no place for me to go. I could take it to Rhode Island and have a shot of talking them into it. Uh, I could send it to my daughter in Oregon and see if they can legitimize it. So that's what happened. My daughter sent me all the papers, Oregon papers, legally. I sent Filled them out, sent them a check for $250, sent the prescription. No. They, specifically, she, the doctor was not registered in Oregon, so, you know, we'll keep the check, but we're sending everything else back. Thanks. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so that, you know, it, it was trying to get it, but. The access isn't there. And that's right. something that we're going to talk to you about today because uh, we've been talking about that for a year plus. I've been writing about it. Now the Globe's finally starting to cover it. But we have the Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance here today, the group that's actually trying to get access. They're trying to address this at a state house. They have a bill up there that has been uh, put up by some elected officials, uh, has 16 co-sponsors. It's going to get a hearing, and I know that they want you to speak. So we've set you up with that. We also have Healthy Heady Lifestyle to give you more education on medical marijuana use, some things we were asking about earlier. We also have another doctor who's an expert 
she was at the uh, New England Cannabis Convention. She was uh, on two different panels. Dr. Uma, she's a big star. Say hello, she is Dr. Sitting Uma. Right here. Hi, everybody. It's truly an honor, and thank you very much for being here. Let's turn your microphone on. Yeah. <laughs> Look at like, Bob. Bob's Bob's like, what kind of amateur chopper? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank That's you, Bob. Right. Yeah, I turn. have more than one life. Yes, yeah. uh, we know. <laughs> when, a, when, a, when a Hall of Fame broadcaster. No, no, sorry. 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 We love it. You fit right in. You you are a young jerk. This is us. I love it. So, yeah, we're the young jerks. And, Bob, we have so many questions for you. I got one. This New England Cannabis Convention was... An amazing event. Uh, mm-hmm. I have this, like you, you said to me you wanted to be the spokesperson. I'm going to give you the whole thing on the show from the cast is everyone that's here. It's like, how can we do that? Because I think we should do it, number one. And number two, and I think we can. And how much you want to do, let's find out because I'm going to offer you a million ways. One way. We had this last New England Cannabis Convention. I'm the programming director. I want you to book the next panel, a Bob Lobel panel, where you bring up a couple friends. Whoever, you know, media, celebrities, news, me, anyone that you think would support you on this, your wife, any, you know, family. Um, and, and, you know, maybe there are some medical marijuana users that we don't know about, that you know about. You know, that kind of thing. I want to see if you can. Let's do this official. We're going to keep, continue to do these with Think Boston. I want you to be a big part of it. Would you be interested in that, number uh, one? Of course I would. But I think I just the only thing I'd ask you is that. It, it's got to be helpful. Yes. It's got to be. And I'll be there to help. It's got to be legit. It's got to be exactly. helpful. And, you know, that, that's all. I mean, I think we, we can push the can down the road a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's something about Massachusetts that, that doesn't surprise me that you can get a prescription, but you can't get the drug. Yes. <laughs> but just, and that's, where are you from? Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Go. And that's, that the, what we, we, that's the fight, and that's what we need you to help. We drive that home. To... Drive it home for us that you don't have the medicine. Why, why should we have to go to I... not totally legal sources when we all voted yes and it happened, and now this DPH is just taking it away? I think that. What you got, what you've done so far has been working slowly, but yes. working. And you got the right people. I'd be honored, flattered to be part of it. I, I just don't want you to expect uh, them to react because I have this persona. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. your persona, you are beloved. And, and when we represent you in the real way that you're doing this today, this is no one can deny what you are, have serious back pain. It works. Mm-hmm. You, you, you look at the amount of work you did. Well, I, I, I didn't tell you what happened with the pain. Was stuff. Should I tell you about the things that have been replaced? I didn't oh. do that. Right? I did two knees. You didn't tell us about the no, knees. Yeah. You told us about the back, but not the knees. Tell us about that, too. Two knees have been replaced. Mm-hmm. Not at the same time, like five years in between. Two rotator cuffs uh, that are still damaged. Okay, and then the and then the the back, you know, the fusions, and then the stuff. The the two things that really probably are going to prevent me from walking without crutches. Uh, I broke. I was outside feeding the birds <laughs> in our backyard, and I fell down. And I broke the head of the femur mm. on my right side. Oh, it was it's a like, huge bone. and it was cold. Uh, seriously, I don't know how come my wife was home, but if she hadn't been home, I could still you, be there laying on the ground. Could, yeah, it was that, and then uh, that was brutal. They had to put pins in that one. Less than a year later, I fell down again in the bathroom upstairs. I did the exact same thing to the other head of the femur. Cracked it, so they did ex- almost exactly the pins on the other side, matching, matching pins. Matching so it was all these things, and that's that really was the. Those things were the killers. Those were the really painful ones. And I know, I remember going over in the ambulance. You know, they came to the ambulance twice. It was ridiculous. I mean, they you well again? built a highway to our house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. EMT. I kept saying, "Just come and give me something for yeah. the pain. Just give me some." I don't care, Toradol, anything you got, just give it to me. Because you know, I just, you know. Uh. Anyway, it was, it, here I am. It all worked out. I still have residual pain. Uh, the bottom of my feet are relentless. Yes. Yeah, they have a mind of their own. Yes. They in the do. middle of the night. I know the mid- exactly I tell, what you're talking about. Suzanne, just in the middle of the night. They just Pulsing, hurrying, shut throbbing. Up. I know. You know, I have to, like, I say you want to know this stuff. I know, no, I, I do. More, I, I have to, leave them, I have to. 
I can't believe some of the stuff works, but I just have to like lean them over the bed. Yep. And they, they stop. Yeah. So I don't understand why, but I'm not going to ask. I'm going to just do it. So, you know, I'd like to be able to get up and take some medical marijuana. Yeah. At right. Three o'clock. If it works. Right. If yeah. it works for you, like, why not? I okay. Mean, that's my sad story. And that's it. But no, you know what? That, that's I'm, luck- thing, I'm lucky to be here. I can drive. I can do a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And um, I just don't expect to be able to walk. But I've come to grips with that. That's what's so important, though, about that is that you you live this life every day, and there's so many people out there that do the same exact thing, yeah. right? There's so many people that are in your exact same position that have, and that's why it's so important for you to say, come out okay, and say, "Hey, it. listen." You know what? That's right. great. If that if that is in fact the motivation, I'll be definitely be carrying that flag. And I you'll be surprised. You know, that's that, how I see it. Yeah. I know. I think that's really well put. And sure, a lot, um, sure. If I can say, "Hey, look," you know, here's what here's the way it is. It doesn't have to be this way. No. But I'm on your side. You know, these all these people are on your side. Why do, you, do you think we're here? Right. right. A lot of people don't feel comfortable to talk about oh, it. Oh, no, and, not at all. And here you are, you know. We were uh, talking about, you know, grandparents that wouldn't even touch the stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, my own, my own grandparents. We're talking about my grandparents. <laughs> you know, and, and both of them would be able to benefit from it. And it's just. You know, it's shunned away because from their culture, from their generation, it's, it was bad. It yeah. was reefer madness. Yeah. It was, yeah. you know, and my grandfather was a drug rep for, you know, 40 years. And so he was getting mainline misinformation from the company that he worked for. And, and now my grandmother won't try it because, well, he'll be upset, you know, and so they and both yeah. can be helped. And, and a, it doesn't... Lot, a lot of the people up at the state house are that generation. And that's why I think having you up there, they, they've seen you on TV for how many years, Bob? I mean, you did, I think, almost 25, 20, how many years were you at NBC, CBS? I don't know, about 30, but I wasn't yeah. drugged up all the time when I was on TV. Yeah. So I was like, right. <laughs> no, it was just, we're here now. It's, you know, it's yeah. post-TV. It's I know. Like, but yeah. people know. I mean, they've seen you. They know you. Um, you know, the, the thing I want to, uh, you I want to do for you today is we have a doctor and we have healthy, healthy lifestyle. They're all about the education. Are there questions you have? I know there were questions you had earlier about dosages. Your wife had questions. Do well, you have I questions to, for I them? I tried to talk to Suzanne. I said, well, this is what wins. Wins my, my daughter. So this is what she said about well, percentages of THC. And I, and I couldn't remember the other uh, CBD. CBD, which is the pain stuff and which is the get high stuff. And I just... For lack of conversation, you know, that's, I guess that's the way I refer to it. I mean, it's not a medical way of saying to get the pain stuff or to get high that's stuff. That's how it works, though. Yeah. It is how yeah. it works, yeah. right? That's how it works, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> tell me which is which. Okay. Um, Bob, first of all, I want to say thank you very much. And one of the things that you're bringing up, which I'm seeing in my patient population, is this medicine is not for everybody, but it should be the first line and not the last line yeah. good. as an alternative, number one. And it is improving quality of life yes. and giving hope. Thank you. Absolutely. That's good. I have seen patients get off all their narcotics, if not at least reduce their medications and not have the side effects, and they're not zombified. I don't know exactly. if there's a word like that. That's but pretty good now. There is now. <laughs> <laughs> because truly, they are living in this out-of-state body. They don't have a quality of life, not only for themselves. They feel like they're a burden to themselves. They're a burden to their families, their children, and society. And now we see... And I have seen all generations now from um, I've seen him ages from 18 to 96. And you mentioned something. Your daughter taught you about this, which is such a nice way that we're seeing generations where I see the parents bringing the kids in or the kids are bringing the parents in, their grandparents, even great, great grandchildren yeah. bringing their grandparents in for this medicine. I think that's really cool. I, that's, I've absolutely thought about that, doctor, that. I thought, yeah, this is that's so sweet that, you know, I'm not telling my daughter, don't do that. I don't want you to get caught with marijuana. <laughs> and we're not calling you, be, you a pothead either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want you to get bailed out of jail or have me come out there. But on the other hand, she's taking care of me. Absolutely. Try, trying to. And I, she, you know, I think it's wonderful parents are really listening to their kids, too, which is another thing. We're getting correct information. It's not reefer madness information. You know, I always say I want to give, come up with a lecture that says, you know, madness or medicine. It is truly medicine. It is not madness. And I think it's criminal what is happening in this country and in this state. I just wanted to clarify one thing just for the record, because I'm very important about using the right terminology. Yeah. 
um, doctors can't give a prescription for this medicine because it's in Schedule 1. Doctors can write a prescription for things that are in Schedule 2 to Schedule 5. So right now, cannabis is in Schedule 1 along with LSD, heroin, and ecstasy. I mean, that's insane. Those medicines kill people, and zero, zero people have died from cannabis. Zero. Dr. Uma, uh, you're with Uplifting Wellness, right? Uplifting Health and Wellness in Natick, Massachusetts. Thank you, Dr. Uma. How do you get that changed? How do you get cannabis out of that number one category? Well, guess what? I don't think it belongs in any category, and that's coming from Dr. Uma, because all those other categories (laughs) kill people, and cannabis kills nobody. So why should it be in a category? First of all, for people that don't know, These schedules mean that there's three categories that we look at. The potential for abuse, is there medical use, and is there medical research? Well, a lot of people don't know this, but the U.S. government has a patent for this medicine since 2003. So they've kept it in Schedule 1 saying that there's no medical use and that there's no medical research. And meanwhile, they have the patent which shows all the research. Which Criminal. we know. I mean, we know it's a medicine. It's been medicine even before all this, you know, recently happened where we started to change the laws. We have calls. Maybe we should take some calls. We have more questions for Bob LaBell. Um, and we'll have healthy uh, Holly from Healthy Heady Lifestyle. Uh, maybe she can give Bob some uh, tips. Pointers? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We'll, uh, we'll call her. Uh, who's, uh, who's calling in right now? We're gonna, what's going on? It's one of your favorite callers. I, I think I know who it is. Is it Donna Hackett? Yes. You're a medical hey, mom survivor. What's up, Donna? Nothing. I had to call in on your special show tonight with Bob. Of course. And so what do you think so far? you have a question for Bob or comment? No, I just want to let him know it's outstanding that he's coming out in support for us. And I, I just I can't thank him enough because while there's many moms like me and people like Mike and Holly... There's very few like yourself, Bob, that, you know, um, people respect and listen to and admire. And, um, you know, Boston's such a big sports town. Uh, My husband's an absolute sports fanatic. He he wasn't impressed that I spoke at the convention until he heard that you were there. And (laughs) some some Mike guy that he listens to on the radio. Mikey Adams. <laughs> then it was a big deal. Yeah. Then it was. A then big they deal. showed up. Exactly. <laughs> I know. My family too. They love sports, and I, for me, it was too. Because you know, I had a. Uh, one of the kids, he's not a kid anymore. He's he's a coach now. I used to be a coach at Triton High School wrestling. If people know that, I was a head coach. I was an all-star wrestler. I had school records in track. That's how I hurt my back in wrestling. And uh, um, you know, basically, I had one of the kids that I hadn't even met before, but I had heard about him, and he took second in the state a couple of years ago. And he's a coach now, and he was at the convention. And it was just a, there was an athletic feel to it. It's great to see athletes coming out and. Uh, Thank you, Bob, for bringing no, that. No, I just would say this. To thank you uh, for saying uh, what you said on the phone. But I, I would only like to put it in context of, um, you know, it's like opportunity. It's not an opportunity uh, of talent. It's an opportunity of, of availability. You know, whatever has happened uh, career-wise is is really totally irrelevant except for if it's allowed uh, me to be in a position or anybody to be in a position of now using that uh, opportunity and using that awareness for uh, good and positive, then bring it on. Hey, (laughs) and you've always done that. I mean, you've always done the charity work. You did so much charity work. You know what? I'm I'm pretty selfish. I can, no, I can, (laughs) I'm not the, believe me. You're so humble. I, I, I love a, it, though. I got a, fl- a few flaws. Yeah. Just, just go ask him. <laughs> ask the rest of everyone else. Go oh, ask Suzanne. She's over there in the corner. <laughs> She's smiling. We all got him. Don, thank you very much for calling. Thank you, Donna. And uh, to say more about Donna, too, Bob, is she's a breast cancer survivor. Uh, she's been fighting for the stuff in Rhode Island, got the laws better. Their law wasn't as good at first. It's gotten much better because of Donna. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna Hackett, for calling in. And uh, 617-500-7100 is our phone number if you want to call in. Um, 
Hell, uh, Holly. Yes. Do you have any advice to Bob? Because he was asking about, you know, about the edible situation and how does he know what he's using and how much to use and... Well, it, as Dr. Neuma knows, um, it's very hard to kind of recommend what the best method of ingestion is for each patient as it's um, different for each individual. You could write out like a piece of paper, okay, here's here's what I want you to put in your, um, what do you call them? In your mouth? No. Your edible? In your edible? No, the small. Uh, oh, you want the vaporizer. Smoke? Vaporizer. Vaporizer. Yeah, vaporizer. Yeah. Why don't you tell us? I'm not exactly. You should use the vaporizer as opposed to the um, as to smoking. It's it's more right. efficient, and more effective. Um, you don't get all the uh, good cannabinoids when you burn it or or combustion. Um, so we carry different vaporizers. We'd be happy to talk with you two more offline and kind of give you some hands on training. That's what we do. Yep. Uh, go through all that with you so that you can get the best method. You know, everybody's out there listening and say, man, is he lucky he's going to get hands-on yes. training? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Steve and he's Molly. Got, he's yeah, going to yeah. get hands-on training, yeah. training and smoking dope. How yeah. about that? <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. They go out to the house and they wow. do. We have another phone call. We should take the phone call. <laughs> Hello, caller. This is uh, Jeremiah from the Cannabis Society of Massachusetts. Hey, Jeremiah. Hello, Jeremiah. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. Uh, good to see you last weekend. Tell us uh, what you think about the show and Bob Lobel. Yeah, definitely. It was great to see you guys, too, last week. And uh, I just want to say everybody on the show tonight is really holding it down. Everybody's speaking the truth. Uh, you know, Bob's holding down, you know, this is a medicine and this is the way it should be. And uh, Dr. Room has always got the perfect knowledge. So everybody's really just doing the right thing. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling no in. No problem. And, uh, we'll and thanks for having Bob LaBelle on, Mike, because this is... Uh, this is great to have everybody get together. Yeah, he's pretty happy and, about uh, being here. Thanks. I want to let you guys know, <laughs> we, we have an event coming up, the Cannabis Society, uh, this Friday at uh, Microsoft New England Research and Development. Uh, we're doing an event on cannabis genetics and testing. Uh, so we're just we're having a couple labs and a few testing facilities come to talk about uh, the technology that's emerging. Awesome. I saw that online. I think everyone should check it out at the Microsoft Center. That's pretty amazing. Uh, Pro Verde is right. going to be there. And uh, the other one that comes in, uh, uh, what's the other group? The uh, I know. What is it? MCR Labs. MCR Labs. Thank you, Uma, MCR Dr. Labs. Uma. And I should know them. I hang out with them. <laughs> Those guys are great guys, MCR Labs, and they're uh, cutting edge. Uh, thank you, Jeremiah. No problem. And well, actually, night, before I let you go, are you still there? Yeah. Why don't you tell, uh, I know that you, you probably have something to weigh in to Bob. Um, yeah. The importance of him speaking out today. Well, yeah, I mean, the Cannabis Society, we're just a nonprofit social club that we just get together and create events about once a month or every few weeks about cannabis uh, in general. And uh, everybody getting out and speaking about this as a medicine because, you know, uh, it's great because people, every individual that needs this needs it for their own specific reason. And uh, everybody getting out behind this message is great. So I commend you, Bob, for coming out because it's not hard. It's hard for everybody. Thank you. you. I'm I'm honored to be here. uh, These guys have been great. So, yeah, you know, if anybody's interested in the Cannabis Society, you can check us out at uh, cansociety.org and our events uh, in and around the Boston area. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thanks, no Jeremiah. Good night, everyone. You too. Bye bye. We are the Young Bye-bye. Jerks on WEMF Radio. We're sitting here with legendary Hall of Fame, you know, irreverent, Easy. careful, uh, careful. you know, Easy. guy that you know, guy that doesn't like Don't compliments. Go over the line here. Let's go, Bob Lobel. Right. He's going to get to walk out of here. You come. <laughs> this is the show for that, Bob. Because <laughs> you know we're we're serious about it. I mean, we we wouldn't say that. We don't say this about everybody. Um, we're, we're very honored to have you here, um, obviously. And Frank Capone over here. Yeah, hey. So uh, we have more questions, too. I mean, uh, we also wanted to bring Nicole. Nicole Snow is uh, Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance uh, Deputy Director. They have a bill at the State House, has 16 co-sponsors. Uh, this is one of the groups that was responsible for medical marijuana. Their, uh, their executive director, Matt Allen, worked on that campaign, question three. Um, this is the patients group in Massachusetts. They represent the patients at the state house with the policymakers with the DPH. Um, they worked with DPH, but then they got burned by DPH and we lost our access. So now they're at the state house. They've uh, had these moms that we know, Jill, uh, Lisa, and who's uh, Cindy. Cindy. They have ki- children that we know that are, you know, basically having seizures at the state house. We need to bring attention to the issue, and we've been doing it for so long, you know, after so many years, and you can only beat your head against the wall for so long, and 
having you represent the older community and the, you know people that are in pain and bring attention to the real issue would be really huge to thousands of patients across Massachusetts. Well, uh, that, you know, if you say so. <laughs> I absolutely we believe do. so. Yeah, I no, would 100%. Say it, it, I also, also, I kind of also, you know, believe in strategy yes. in terms yeah. of presentation. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not the kind of person that would beat your head against the wall and say, here, look at this. Hmm. This is the way it really is. Now, I don't think that that doesn't work for me, but it, it may work for other people. Uh-huh. I think sometimes you just kind of have to give your the opponents uh, credit for at least showing up. And then you can say, look, you know, this is what's really going on. And you got to, you know, get in front of the train instead of being dragged by it. Well, so, we're... I mean, the, I just think that, uh, but we're on the cutting edge now, and we're going to make a difference at the state house, I believe, at this next hearing. Uh, you know what? And I'll be, fl- I'll be, I'll probably be very nervous. Uh, but let's see what happens. Uh, this that'll be an experience. Yeah, uh, yeah, really, that will be an amazing, amazing experience. You know, and hopefully, it'll work. Isn't that the idea? Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, you know, I, I'm already crafting the speech. It's like, yeah, nice. yeah. Let's hear from that. No. Thank you. And I tell you what, I'll, the first thing I'll say is I represent an amazing mm-hmm. am- a number of people. You do. Mm-hmm. Not numbers, but they're amazing people. And Me, education. Right, yeah. I think that's something that you're going to be able to bring about, Bob, and take the face, put a different face to this medicine. I hope so. I mean, I, Absolutely. It's yeah. not about abuse. It's about use. It's just about doing the right thing, and it is for so many people. But a medicine that works. Yeah. You know? And nobody dies. No. Yeah. Am I overdoing it? No, you don't. No, absolutely not. not. I, mean, I mean, let's, I mean, back pain. This is, Dr. Uma can testify to this. Mm-hmm. Um, they laugh like the Howie Cars of the world. They're like, oh, people have back pain. He doesn't get it. But Howie Car wants to come and check the bulge of my back. You know, I'm an, I'm still an athlete, even with this pain. This, but it's like, a, you know how the Chinese water torture? That's what this is like, except it's sharper, and it, but it never goes away. It's just the pain. Sometimes it recedes, sometimes it's better, and then sometimes it gets worse. And it just, it's always there. It's like, imagine having a headache all the time. You just don't feel as good. And so many, how many, what are the numbers of people that suffer? This is who you're representing the most, and especially athletes. How many have back pain daily? I would daily? say it's chronic, at least more than 50%. That's an easy percentage and then but the problem is back pain affects so many people in their day-to-day life it affects our whole world in occupational injuries how many injured workers how many people are out of work and how many people are on chronic or working hurt like i do i work i work seven days a week everyone knows i i bet i have back pain every day and i come home i'm like ah but this is the beauty of this medicine it's not that the pain is gone no it doesn't become your focus of your work and the medicine is also working as an anti-inflammatory. Definitely. You had asked, Bob, before the difference between the sativas yes. and the indicas. This is the way I remember it. I remember it's sim- simple things. Yes. Uh, S for sun, sunshine, I for insomnia. So I think of it as indicas are for the nighttime. And then Put you the, to sleep. Yes. For, and then the sativas are sunrise, so during the daytime. But my students help me remember it even better. They say indica is for the, in the couch. Yeah. You're in the couch. And when you when need you to go to sleep. When the pain's really bad, you just need to sleep. And the sativa's good, like, uh, for that, like, head. It's more like, you know, it kind of gives you that edge on the head, too. Creativity. And it feels a little better. A little more creativity if I'm writing. It's just been an amazing show already. Let I want to thank that. you again. Let me see that. You want to see the numbers? Yeah. yeah. I just, you know. It's a snapshot. Show them the numbers. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we are the Young Jerks and Bob LaBelle's <laughs> checking like, oh, my numbers. He wants to know how many listeners we have. I want your bikes. Not as I many as CBS, uh, <laughs> CBS Channel 4 like just, you did for decades. I just never want to. I don't mind the numbers. I just don't want to see what they write. That's a big difference. They love you. I mean, that's what the, you should see what they're writing today. Okay, well, let's There hasn't been one person right. that says Bob LaBelle looks like an idiot doing this. I mean, let's Dave Wedge. Let's no, talk about. Like, now you've just yeah. put an idea in their heads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Wedge. Uh, he, he wrote for the Boston Herald for I know years. Dave, yeah. yeah, he writes for the uh, Dig Boston. Sometimes he's got the book coming out, Boston Strong. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's going to be made a movie. He posted it on his Facebook, and you know, like the whole local media went crazy. They were like, oh, "Wow, awesome!" Everyone loved it. Really? On Facebook, yeah. You know, I'm from New England cannabis. I mean, I know. I mean, you know what? 
And today it's even more. People love this today. I don't know that uh, that Facebook thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook, but I know that I, it's there. It's on it. And I was in a class which I kind of co-teach at Salem State. Oh, you do? You're up there? Yeah. A couple of times I, a I week. I just moved up there. Right a couple of times a week. And the uh, co-teacher put her computer in front of me. She says, what's this? No, she <laughs> saw it. <laughs> Were the kids asking about it? She, I, I told her, I said, you know, you're the last person I would have thought <laughs> would have told me that. I thought, you know, one of these 25 kids, kids would have told me. But no, they didn't. She's, she's the one. That so she's, is she smoking, too? <laughs> I, I That's what you got to ask her. Because I used to get worried about being in high times way back. And... Uh, I'd be like, you know, if anyone ever noticed it in the real, like, straight world I was in, being a financial advisor at the time and still concerned about that, uh, they would be smoking too, right? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, it's just very bizarre that uh, that's, I would not have found it myself because I just don't go on there. Yeah. You know, I just, She's I'm afraid of it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm almost surprised more media hasn't picked it up yet. I think they no, will. That's all right. We're done. They, we, we can move on to other gonna, things. <laughs> it's not about me being at that of meeting. It's about moving on from that. Well, that's what we're doing. I, I mean, and you really do bring it. I mean, I know you're very humble and, you know, you, you have a uh, style. Yeah. 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 How, did, how did you even think about this as a medicine, Bob? There was nothing else. You know, I wasn't going back to pills. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my wife would not have let me. She just really... Thank God. You know, she's very... I think there's such a need for education, number one. I just was at a, gave a lecture at, uh, at a hospital nearby in Natick, and I asked how many... There was about 50 uh, physicians, and I said, how many of you know about the endocannabinoid system? Yeah. And not one no. of them raised their hands. And if I tell you the amount of resistance I'm facing to try to teach this in the medical schools among residents, I've been flatly told this is not needed. It is not imperative. And I'm like, how could this not be imperative when we've got 24 states, including District of Columbia, where medical marijuana is available? You mean to tell me those people are not working and in an environment? And this medicine improves the quality of life. I can't say this. And I always say cannabis is not an entrance drug. It's an exit drug from pharmaceuticals and narcotics. That's and a, I truly believe it. It's a great, uh, I don't want to call it, a, I don't want to reduce it to call it a line, but that's, in our business, when we say it's a great line, it's it's exactly what I mean. That's, that I don't have a prescription pad in my office because I don't believe in it. And I think there's so much abuse out there that doctors and healthcare providers, our whole system is geared to prescription meds. And when we talk about this medicine, it's in Schedule 1. I really, the only word I can say, it's criminal. And people need to ask, how could we keep this medicine away from children and adults and people of all ages? Well, you know, that's really, uh, I've certainly been educated about schedule tonight already. Yeah, you know, schedule one. Things. Yeah, good. That's the thing about it, though, is you. Like you, you have Thank this you. situation where... Uh, You're not only a doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> <laughs> that's my line. I say that. Yeah. You can't say that. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I love what I'm doing, though, and I feel truly honored and blessed to be able to take care of patients like this. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you. They're the ones that are blessed. Yes. And again, um, we still with uh, Nicole Snow here. I, I want to bring up something, Bob. At the state house, you might want to consider if these guys don't go along with us, you'll come up with a line now. Why can't we get politicians like that? <laughs> I'll be right. I don't know. It's not I'm just never very far away. <laughs> have something on yeah. the call. Never, like, can never. you say that for us today? Why can can't we get players that? like that? I love it. Like, why can't we get players? Why like can't that? we get players like that? It's very you know. There you go. <laughs> you know what? Just let me tell you about um, Paul Tucker, our, our state rep, Paul Tucker. Like how. You know, things have been changed over at the state house. We got like 20 new freshmen, and you said like political strategy is very important. Um, we do reach out to our legislators, and you know, our our group, the patients, and um, everyone did a great job. We got 16 co-sponsors. Actually, the snow worked in our favor. We got hmm. nine during the three days um, at the beginning of the week. Um, but you know. My state rep, Paul Tucker, just got into office, and he sat with me more than three times and discussed, you know, what's going on 
with the medical marijuana situation in Mass. And at the time, he, he wasn't in office. Um, he was talking to me as the Salem police chief. So he comes from a law enforcement perspective. And he was one of the first people to sign this bill. It was Frank Smizek that presented it, and Paul Tucker was the first person to sign the bill. And for me to sit down with a legislator, a new one, um, and, and discuss all of the parts and how this will create immediate access to patients. Like I said, we were talking about the caregivers. And the problem. And the, prob the problems that we're having um, with creating access. The, Massachusetts is actually in violation of the law because we have no dispensaries open, and they were promised us 35. Um, so at this point, um, you know, we're way far behind. Um, but what this law, this bill will do is will actually change the caregiver ratio so one caregiver can grow for up to 10 patients. So it'll create immediate access now. Create a market so you can actually have a choice. You can find someone to help you help, help get you. access. It will also protect people uh, employment so they don't get fired for being a medical marijuana patient to protect, protect their uh, spa, um, uh, children, right? Protect their children. They, they don't lose child custody. It does a number of other great things. It's like Protects from the, from the patients up. They, they went around to the community. We've been talking about it a long time, and they took all the feedback from everyone and said, how can we make the best law? Why can't we make it like Rhode Island or Maine or even better? And that's what they're doing. Why were they able to do it in Rhode Island so quickly? As and can't they didn't? It took some time. They they mm -hmm. started earlier. That's what, how it was. And they you know the other thing they did differently is they started through the state house. So those guys at the state house were the ones who did it, okay. and they're more willing to fix it and make sure. it better with the feedback. At the state house, you ha kind of have this confrontational thing where the people did it, the state house didn't. So now they have to. Now they're like, oh, we don't know what to do. We, we you know, they've been ignoring us for decades. So now maybe they will do something because we really need them to do something, as you see. Well. All I can say is I'm raising my hand, so call on me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you having me in tonight. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, Thank you so much here. for coming. No, no, you guys are great. We're just, uh, no. No. All right. Exactly. So how can we reach hundreds and thousands of patients that we're registering? I mean, they've shut down the caregivers. Uh, we had people like Bill Downing, who was a caregiver for about 1,200 patients, and was told to cease and desist, and people did the right thing. He registered each yeah, patient. he did. He stuck by the law. He even had to sue him, and uh, it didn't work out in court, unfortunately. The DPH apparently can do what they want, and they don't care that they're hurting people. I think uh, yeah, I would say one other thing in listening to Dr. Uma talk here in the last uh, couple of uh, sentences that you had, this is... This is a very complicated yes. uh, issue, and the more I hear about it, the more complicated it becomes. Mm -hmm. My instinct is to calm down and focus on the stuff that's really important, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's one of the challenges of, you know, am I making myself clear? No, it is. Yeah, we. I get you. So in, many uh, things, yeah. there's like a lot you to said, that, you know, there's... Caregivers, yeah, they're just. We just let's focus. keep it this. We need access. We need you to be able to get the medicine that you need. That's well, as I, simple you know as that. I'm, a, I'm hooked up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got. We are going to take a break. We've gone like Absolutely. you know. We've been going and going and going. Thank we, you all we very want much. to cut it a few minutes ago, but we don't. We didn't want to let you go, Bobby. So uh, we are the Young Jerks. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. See in, you at uh, the state house. Yeah, Absolutely. we'll see you at the state, state house. house. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go get our picture taken with Bob Bell on the way out and give him a big right. hug. So we'll be back in like ten minutes. Young Jerks. W E M. F Radio, presented by the Sound Museum Boston. Healthy Heady Lifestyle is a team of passionate individuals dedicated to providing tools, resources, and information to people interested or curious in using cannabis for their health. Healthy Heady Lifestyle can help you with everything from information on obtaining a letter of recommendation, finding the best vape for you to use, customized consultations, and everything in between. You can find Healthy Hetty Lifestyle on Facebook and Instagram or on the web at HealthyHetty.com or give them a call at 617-231-6363. 